Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Data Driven Audit Committee Presentations in Theory and Practice. My name is Jim Kaplan, President and Founder of AuditNet, the global resource for auditors. This webinar today is being brought to you by Teammate. I'd like to briefly introduce our speakers for the webinar today. Uh, it's Toby DeRoche and Stephen Zapolsky. Stephen is a market development consultant with Teammate, a Walters Kluwer's business, and Stephen brings over nine years of audit software experience to the table and consults with key st stakeholders to understand the needs of their departments and demonstrates how Teammate can meet those needs. Toby is a certified internal auditor with an MBA and in internal audit specialization from Louisiana State University. He's a market development consultant with uh, Walters Kluwer's uh, teammate, and uh, we're pleased to have both of these subject matter experts with us today. Before I turn the floor over to our speakers to introduce the agenda, I'd like to briefly cover the housekeeping items for today. Uh, the webinar is being recorded, and you will receive a link to the recording. Uh, Hopefully within a day, uh, we'll try to get that out later today if we can get that recording uploaded, uh, but you will receive that, uh, that link as long as you are registered for today's session. Uh, because we are operating under NASBA rules, we are required to ask polling questions during the webinar, and CPE certificates will be sent to all of those who answer all of the polling questions. You must answer all three polling questions, so please pay attention to them when, when we launch them. And the CPE certificates and the link to the recording will be sent to the email address you registered with in GoToWebinar. You can submit questions via the chat box, and we'll answer them during or at the conclusion of the webinar if we can get to them. We have a very large turnout today, so we may not be able to answer all of your questions, but all of the questions will be forwarded to our presenters, and they will have an opportunity to respond to you by email. After the webinar is over, you'll also have an opportunity to provide feedback. Please complete the feedback questionnaire to help us continuously improve our webinars. Uh, as far as disclaimers, the views expressed by the presenters do not necessarily represent the views, positions, or opinions of AuditNet or the presenters' respective organizations, so please uh, be aware of that. At this point, I'd like to uh, turn the floor over to our speakers and uh, to present today's agenda and the topic of data-driven audit committee presentations. Stephen? All right, thanks, Jim. Um, as we start going into our presentation today, I uh, wanted to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about uh, and, and sort of set the framework for how we're going to approach this topic. We're going to be talking about audit committee presentations specifically from the data point of view, from a bottoms-up, data-driven approach. The first part of the webinar, we're going to go through some of the best practices and trends and things that we're seeing out in the audit community and the way that we should be collecting the data, the kinds of information that we should be presenting, and the way that we need to actually format some of those, those, those visuals and the presentation that we need to um, get those meanings across to our audit committee. We're going to then shift gears a little bit and we're going to take a more practical approach. We're going to actually take a deeper dive into the data, show you what it looks like, and then how to then gather it, analyze it, and present it in a way that matches up with those best practices that we're going to be talking about at the outset. Before we get too deep into this, I want to make clear sort of the background of this. The, the, the reason that we even give presentations to our audit committee really ties back to what their purpose is inside of an organization. So just to make sure that everyone is clear, when we talk about an audit committee, they have a handful of specific responsibilities by definition. They're responsible primarily to assist the board of directors with monitoring the financial reporting process, with understanding the system of internal control throughout the organization. They help to monitor and manage the audit process, not necessarily the individuals in the department. We've got management for that, but they're monitoring the overall execution of the audit uh, plan. They're also then responsible for processes related to both monitoring compliance with laws and regs and monitoring some of the more governance aspects of an organization with things like codes of conduct and ethics. Now, in line with those, 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 those concepts of what that audit committee is there to do, there's a few things that we need to keep in mind in the data that we're capturing. So when we're down in the details and we start to pull the data together, there's key sources we want to make sure that we're, we're tapping into so that we're helping to line up with what the audit committee's purpose is. 
So the first thing is going to be details in our audit plan. We're going to capture some of the data specific to the audits that we're capturing. Now this is going to go pretty far into those audits. We want to see not just a count of how many audits that you're doing. We want to get beyond that. We want to start to categorize things across those audits. We want to start giving some, some relevant information as it relates to the audits that we're performing. We also want to dig down into the issues that come out of those audits, as well as issues that are coming from other sources. You know, just the audit department itself isn't the only one that looks at an organization. We have, may, may have regulators that are getting involved. We may have our external audit groups that are getting involved. There's issues that are coming from various sources. We want to take those issues and we want to start breaking them down too. We want to be able to tell the audit committee not the fact that we found X number of issues. It's great that you found something, but tell me something about them. Tell me why I need to be concerned about these issues or why I don't need to be concerned about these issues. We also want to tap into the risk and control data throughout the organization. And for most companies, when we start talking about risk and control, their minds immediately go to SOX. But this goes beyond SOX. This isn't just financial reporting. Financial reporting was one aspect of what the audit committee is responsible for, but we go well beyond that. We're always looking at management controls. We're always looking at organizational risk, not something that's specific to only financial reporting. So we want to get into the information around those risks and controls and ideally tying them back to the issues, tying them back to the audit, and showing a complete picture of what's going on inside of our organization. We also want to look for places where we can help the audit committee by tapping into those other resources throughout our organizations that do similar work. So many organizations will have ERM groups who look at things from an enterprise risk point of view that may be a couple levels above what an audit group is dealing with. We also may, gonna, may have compliance departments outside of audit. We may have fraud investigation teams. Many audit groups are separate from a SOX and control team. We might have other groups that deal with things like legal risks. We might have uh, specific groups to our industry that cover things like environmental health and safety, those EH&S kinds of groups, that deal with specific laws, specific regs. So we want to be able to look into all of these groups and find places where we can combine our reporting with theirs because then we can give our audit committees a more holistic view of what's going on inside of our organization. Beyond just those sources, beyond those audit results types of, of, of data points that we want to uh, gather, we also want to talk about information as it relates to the audit department. That audit committee does still have responsibilities to monitor what's going on inside of our departments. One of the big things that we always look to is is the department qualified to do the work? That's always the big question. And one of the ways that we can show this to our groups is to show them things around our staff. It might be statistics about what kind of certifications our staff members hold, how many years of experience, what kind of specific skill sets they might have. For many groups, what this means is going beyond just do you have a certification this year, but looking into real skills inventory lists for our group start to get a profile for each auditor of what kind of things do they know how to do? What have they been exposed to? Not just with our company, but think about their past experience. Auditors tend to bounce around a lot. So think about where else they may have worked, what other skill sets they may be bringing to the table. We can also look to the results that we've gathered from any kind of uh, external quality assessment reviews. Whether this is something that we've done internally, if it's something that's coming from a peer review, if it's a formal QAIP, Whatever it may be, having that come from a third party adds a lot more reliability to the concept of our department being qualified if we have somebody else's stamp of approval on it. We also want to be able to share some information around things like KPIs on our own department, how we interact with others especially. Most audit departments, pretty much every audit department that we deal with, they're always going through processes where at the end of an audit, we send out a satisfaction survey. You know, and we ask, did the team do a good job? Were they easy to work with? Did they do things on time? We can probably go beyond that now. We've all been doing that for so many years. Think about how we can expand that, that concept, maybe by bringing in balanced scorecard techniques and seeing how the, our department interrelates with our, what are essentially our customer groups throughout the organization and how are we actually uh, performing against those kinds of KPIs. With everything that we start to pull together, 
with all of the data that we're, we're, we're pulling in and analyzing. One of the key pieces to this whole puzzle is going to be for us to provide trending. It adds a wealth of information when we can show how things have turned out year over year. If we can show how things have turned out across different areas. When we start to show trending, we take our presentations significantly deeper. Just to give you some examples of this, and we're going to talk more about this once uh, we start going into the more practical aspect of this and digging deeper into the data. But to give you some examples, when we start talking about our audit issues or our findings, whatever came out of those audits, we want to be able to show trending in those results by different types and categorizations. Maybe it's just by a simple high-level type. You know, and many groups will immediately latch on to something uh, more along those external or, or SOX types of, of uh, issue, severity, uh, material weakness, significant deficiencies kinds of categorizations. <clears throat> but go past that. Go beyond it. Think about ways that you can break down all of this information and categorize it in a way that tells a story. So we might start off with some high-level types. How many of our issues were operational versus financial or, or uh, IT related or compliance related? But then go into maybe root cause trending. How many of the issues that we found in our IT world were caused by breakdowns and segregation of duties or lacking uh, processes around system access? Start to get deeper into these so that with a quick presentation we can tell a story. We also want to see how we can maybe break those audits down by maybe business units or legal entities or lines of business, whatever is applicable to your company, your organization. Think about how we can start to analyze this data in a way that makes it more meaningful for the recipient. We also want to show some of the different statuses, um, the status and maybe different kinds of control points. So when we start to look at the controls throughout the organization, if we can relate those back to the issues that we're finding and show how those issues have a direct impact on a control that's related to a risk that affects a business operation, we can tell we can really take this deeper. We can show a more meaningful, analyzed uh, nature of our organization. Another thing that we need to keep in mind when we start doing this is that it does take time. So we're going to start gathering a lot of information. We're going to be analyzing it. You, know, you may be putting presentations together a couple times a year for the committees. So when we start to put this kinds of information together, ask if they care about it. Ask them before is even better. But have an open conversation with your audit committee chair about whether or not this is actually the kind of data they want to see. Because if we start pulling together a bunch of information, you know, down to the details of the types of issues, the kinds of audits, all this information that we're finding, if we're pulling all this data together and they're not concerned about it, but they have something else that they were concerned about, then we're not being a good partner to the committee. We want to make sure that we're, we have a good, close working relationship with the audit committee and that their concerns are being addressed, that we are still presenting data that is, we know is meaningful. So if it's something that we know might be a concern, if it's something we know is it's maybe something specific to our industry that they need to be looking at, we need to give them that, that material, along with maybe some education as to why they should be concerned. But we want to also find out if it's what they wanted. Now, when we start presenting this data, because up to this point we've been talking about the kinds of data to present, what kind of information to gather. Now that we've got the information, we want to be able to present the data in a way that is meaningful. And by far, the most meaningful type of presentation you can give is visual. We want to focus on visuals. We want the main part of our presentation to be graphical and visual and easy to digest. Now, the main reason for this you have to think about who the audit committee is. Who is making up this committee? It's a bunch of people who have other jobs. This is probably not the only thing that they're going to be doing. It's probably not the only thing they're doing this week, whenever they're looking at your presentation. By far, they are busy people. So if we can give them some information that they can quickly look at and understand and visualize and grasp the story that we're trying to tell them, that is going to go a long way. We found often that the people who are going through these presentations are going through them the night before the committee meeting. They might be looking at them on the plane on the way out 
so we need to give them something quick and easy to understand. Consider putting in things like color coding in the graphs that you present. Uh, label everything appropriately. Make sure that you're giving them simple information, but also along with focused summaries. We don't want to only give them the visual. We've got to give them a little bit more. So maybe we can give them a summary table that explains some of this information. But then we also need to make sure that we have the backup. So once we start giving people graphs and quick tables and summaries, and we start uh, concentrating this information down into the concept of a slide, if we're doing this through something like PowerPoint, we need to have the backup ready so that if they start to look into something and there's a concern, they can go directly to the data and see the details if they need it. That may not be the main part of our presentation, but we need to have it. So now when we start to look at what this looks like, and considering the kinds of reporting and the kinds of things that we're producing, we always start with our most basic. The most basic thing we do in every audit department is produce a report. We come up with some kind of detailed description of what we found. Now many departments will share this report with the audit committee as they come out. So if you're producing a lot of audit reports, you may have been sending them a lot of information all throughout the year. They may or may not have been looking at it. In the best case, they actually read through it, so they have some familiarity of what's been going on. But not everybody does that. Many groups only present summaries to the audit committee. They don't give them all the details. Now, the kinds of information in these reports will tend to be very narrative-based. We'll have things like, here's the issue that we found. Here's some recommendations that we made. Here's the action plan that management put in place. We may or may not have some follow-up that goes along with that. They tend to be a point in time. If we look at the next one, this might be an example of more of a summary version of that. Maybe we're getting now into a dashboard where we can see things like, here's the how many issues that we found, and breaking them down by some high-level types. This is getting closer. Now we're giving them something that they can start to read through and understand. If we look at the next one, now we're getting into the graphic. And we're not going to go too deep into this, because Stephen's going to take us through some more of the details on this later. But right away, what you can see is, I can tell comparatively what the issues look like. When I look at this, right away, my eye goes to, I've got something in my IT group that's it's going on. Because there's a lot of high issues, there's a lot of, of moderate issues. And I see that right away. That's the thing that catches my eye. If I scan through this and I'm categorizing something along SOCs or financial reporting lines, I see that I've got some there, too. Those might be a concern, but when I start looking at this, I immediately can filter through mentally without even having to you know, go through all the details of what I need to look at. So we get to our first polling question now. And the polling question that we have is really around what it is that you do. Do you currently summarize all your data into charts for your presentation? So your options are we primarily do use graphics. That's what we do. We do it sometimes, but we still have a lot of text. Or we never. We only do text-based reports. We give our audit committees a lot of narrative. Or you just don't know. We've launched the polling question, so please take a minute to indicate your response. There is no right or wrong answer. We're just looking for your feedback, making sure that you're paying attention during the polling questions, and uh, we'll keep it open for another uh, another 30 seconds or so. We've got 89% that have voted, so please take time to uh, record your vote. Uh, there is a question that came up from Nisheth. Uh, who does the external quality reviews for internal audit departments at publicly traded versus privately owned companies? And either Stephen or Toby, you can feel this that. Is, this is Toby. I can I can take that one okay. while we're going through this. So from from a, from an external quality review standpoint, um, there's a variety of groups that do these. Uh, we do work pretty closely with the IIA who actually performs those quality assessment reviews on their own. Uh, you can actually have them do it for you. Uh, if you go out to their page, um, to the IAs.org page, they've got a, an entire section dedicated to quality assessments and what they look like, um, 
what should be the context behind those reviews and who does them. We know also that within many of the publicly traded companies, we'll have uh, external audit groups like Deloitte's and PwC's, those kinds of guys will also do them. Okay, very good. Well, let me go ahead and, uh, and close the poll and share the results. And it looks like the majority said sometimes, but we still have a lot of text. So Stephen or Toby, if you want to you know, comment on that, uh, we can go ahead and hide that. And you should be able to show your screen again. And there we go. Yeah, and that's, that's what we thought, is that many people are starting to move that way. Uh, we had less than 20% who do it all the time. And we're finding that this is really becoming the trend. It's more and more we need to get things into a graphical presentation. Still have some text. I mean, we can't completely rely on the pictures. But more and more, that's the trend, is get out of the text, get more into the graphics. Okay, one more poll. Uh, next question is, what level of detail is requested for your reporting? So not what we're providing, but what's being asked for. Are we being asked to provide a lot of granular detailed information? Do we find it's more like a mid-level summary? Do we only get requested to provide very high-level information? Or we don't provide these kinds of reports, or I don't know. Okay, and again, that poll has been launched, so please respond to that. I don't see any other questions that have come in. If anybody does have a question, please use the chat box on your, uh, on your dashboard, and we'll try to answer those questions. We've got about 85% that have voted. We'll leave it open for another 30 seconds. Remember, if you want CPE for today, you must answer the polling questions. Okay, we are going to go ahead and close the poll now and share the results. And it looks like an even split between mid-level summary and a high-level summary. So that's, that's is very interesting. So what we're seeing then is we've got about 80% that don't really need to provide a lot of granular detail. So that means that the audit committees and the groups that are looking at the data they don't necessarily need to see all the, all the, the nitty-gritty that went into it. They don't need to see all of the, the verbal detail that we could give them. So this is pushing more and more toward reliance on more graphics, more visuals. We need to get into that point where we can give them something that tells them the story quickly. Um, and we, that's easier to do with the high-level and mid-level summary types of, of data. And that's really where we're going to start going now, is seeing how we get into that kind of information uh, looking at what that data might look like from both the mid and high level point of view, uh, and how we can even tell some of that more granular story with the kinds of graphics we present. Okay, and we do have another question that came in right at the end there, and that is, is the format a level of details of the reports to the audit committee determined by the audit committee or internal audit? Oh, that's a great question. It's going to be both, because it needs to be a partnership. We need to make sure that the audit committee is, it was first and foremost, we're giving them what they need. You know, we're, you want to give your boss what they want, right? So you need to give them that level of detail that they're requesting, but you need to have the ability to be a balancing act on that. So if they're asking you for tons and tons of detail, maybe you need to show them what else you could give them. So summarize the data first, give them those kinds of graphics, even if they're not asking for it, and show them, here's how I can summarize this data for you to make it more meaningful and have that open dialogue, there, especially between the audit committee chair and the chief audit executive and the directors. If we can have that kind of a dialogue between the two, it's, it's, it's so important. Yeah, Toby, this is Stephen. Um, another thing around that is I like to think of it as a push-pull relationship, where a lot of times an audit department is pushing information to the audit committee, um, and the audit committee is kind of primarily responsible for pulling information that they need to make their decisions and gain an understanding. And a really good presentation to an audit committee is where you can accomplish both goals um, at the same time with presentations.
Okay, well, we do have other questions coming in, but uh, why don't you go on with the presentation? And uh, Toby, if you want to take a look at those other questions, and uh, we can try to answer those perhaps at the next break. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so at this time, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some reporting to audit committees, some actual reports, and some of the details that we need to capture. Before we jump into some presentations and charts and different things. Um, I like to start off that and recognize that there's a variety of audit departments um, represented on this presentation that have a variety of processes from going from detail to actual presentation um, to the audit committee about their audit department and other related information. So there's some of you who have uh, systems that you use. You have systems that you use where you're capturing data points, where you're going through and just in day to day course of your audits, documenting your work, capturing your department details in a system, and you have a push button ready audit report that can go to an audit committee or other audit committee reporting from one system. Now, I would say that's the vast m minority of audit departments. Um, the next kind of bigger chunk of audit departments in their situation is that you're using a system, some type of audit management system to capture the details in the day-to-day -day work. And you may be using that system to get your audit committee report maybe 50%, 75% of the way there. But then you're taking that information and exporting it outside your system that you're using in order to polish it and make it um, report uh, presentation friendly for your audit committee. And then there's others on the call, which I would say is an even larger segmentation of the audit departments out there, where you are manually capturing this information. So you may have your audits organized on a share drive or your C drive. It's uh, dis decentralized. When it's time for audit committee reporting, everybody knows the drill. You go and look at those aud old audit reports. You're looking at your audit work. You're looking at all this manual. Um, decentralized information, putting it into uh, usually Excel, and then once you have it, then you're starting to create your audit committee type of presentation. So what we're going to do is assume no matter what you're doing, that whether you're getting 75% of your audit report, audit committee reporting from system or manually entering it to Excel, we're going to start off with Excel. And that's where we're going to show the, and kind of demonstrate the type of data you need to capture in different ways to present it based off the information that you're trying to communicate. So we're going to look at three areas. We're going to look at audit plan reporting. We're going to look at issue and finding reporting. And then also resource reporting, which is important to show that you have adequate, um, adequate knowledge, competent staff to actually carry out the audit plan. So I'm going to jump over to a spreadsheet real quick related to audit plan. So if you are going beyond the basic text-based reporting, so we, we've jumped from text-based to maybe high-level summary information, there's different ways that you can present. This is a common slide that a lot of audit, um, audit departments use for audit committee reporting that just shows the number of audits. Go to the other slide, I apologize that shows the number of audits that we plan on completing for the next audit cycle. So for 2015, if we were planning for 2015, we can show that we are performing 17 audits um, this year. So this is more of a informational type of slide or chart that we would show, telling them what we've done or what we're going to do. But it really doesn't answer any other questions. And as we talked about, our job as an audit department during audit committee reporting time is to push information up, communicate information up of what we do, how we provide value, and then it's the audit committee's responsibility to pull information from us to answer their questions. So right now, this slide is more informational, but what we recommend is actually adding a little bit more context. So within our data set and data points, we capture not only the number of audits we're completing for 2015, but how, how does that compare to prior years? So now we're getting into more meaningful information where we're providing some context about this year versus prior years. We're looking at a three-year view. 
So visually, I can see very easily in 2013, we performed 13 audits. In 2014, we performed 16. And then in 2015, we perform, we're going to perform 17. Now, what, I recommend, what we recommend is that you even take it to the next level. Because this is adding more context, but it's not really answering the question of why are the audits increasing. We can see that they've increased, but why? What's going on within our organization or our department that would cause that? So this is a, a simple visual or chart that kind of communicates a few things. It actually, well, I'm going to show you, but this one chart is going to communicate not only what we're doing, but why we're doing it and also some additional information. So let's take a look at what we're looking at. Um, in the bottom right-hand side, we have the 2013 audit plan. We have the 2014 to the left, and then we have 2015 to the left of that. Now, you'll notice that in 2013 and the other years, we've separated the audits as far as where do they originate. We have some that were based off a of risk assessment. We have others that were requested by management, managed requests that come up from time to time. So in 2013, we had two management requests. In 2013, we had 11 risk assessment-based audits. As we go to 2014, we can see that the management request increased, um, and the audit from risk-based assessments increased as well. But in 2015, something interesting occurred. Our management requests went up, but then our risk-based audits stayed the same. So when I'm looking at this or I'm presenting this to an audit committee, it answers a lot of questions. It answers the questions of how many audits are we going to do, how many um, have we done in the past, and now with this risk-based versus management request, it gives me an opportunity to push information to share a story. So within this particular audit department, one thing that we wanted to do was to increase our value of an audit department within our organization, so how they viewed us to show that it, we're changing our image. So sometimes audit departments are viewed as the audit police, um, a necessary evil. I've heard lots of things um, of how our organizations view us. So one of the challenges that we have is showing that, you know, we're not here just to catch you doing something wrong, but we're here to make sure that the objectives of the organization are being achieved. So what I can tell and what I can uh, kind of story I can paint here is we have a strategic objective you know, maybe for the last three or five years, that we wanted to change our image from the police mode to the value add. So we started consulting with providing more advisory services in the sense of control self-assessments. We started meeting with management more. Maybe we were involved in implementation um, and reviewing the implementation process of IT systems. So as we seek to change our image as a department, that's why we're getting more management requests. That's why we are still doing risk-based audits but management is getting more comfortable with us to request us to perform engagements prior years that they didn't feel comfortable. So through this one slide, I'm able to communicate a bunch of information. Now, let's jump into the details. So how did I get this information to even present to begin with? Now, you may, be, you may imagine that I, I ran this from some robust system with lots of data points and data connections and um, formulas. Not really. If we take a look at the source of information, it's very simple information that I'm capturing that has very impactful results. So right now, I am capturing information such as the audit plan. What audit plan did this come from? We have the project name, so here's some details. We have the status of the project. Um, was it approved? We have some date information, some time information, the manager and lead, and then also was it risk-based or not risk-based? So this is the type of information that I've captured to create um, those reports that we just saw. Now, with this data, one of the reasons why I like Excel is once you have information in Excel, it's very easy to create impactful visuals for the audit committee. So this is the information that we're capturing. Now, I'm going to use PMA Analytics to get this information, um, to look at it visually initially. And then we're going to create a pivot table and we'll use Excel functionality um, to take a look at a deeper dive into some other areas. But through this quick visualization, I'm able to see how many audits per audit plan. So it's very easy for me to make this and create this to show for the um, presentation. As I scroll across, I can see some more meaningful information, 
which ones are risk-based versus not risk-based. So once I have this information in Excel, um, and I have it in a pivot chart with my chart, I can use 100% of Excel's functionality to create these and to manipulate these. And one simple change, no matter what your presentation looks like, is a contrast. I don't know why, but whenever you choose a black contrast for a presentation, it just it looks very, very sharp, and um, people really appreciate that. So right now I can see the normal view, which is a normal contrast. When you change that contrast and adding the colors and different things like Toby was mentioning before, it really makes information pop out, and it draws the viewer's vision to the information. So if I wanted to see risk-based audits versus management requests, um, et cetera, then if I look at the table or the chart to the top left-hand corner, the summary, you know, I kind of have to work hard to see what's going on. So if I wanted to see the total number of risk assessments, I have to go down to the bottom, look at 46. If I wanted to see those by year, I have to find the year, then I have to look at the total. So it's, it's kind of a, a mental strain, but when you have a visual, it's very easy to see what's going on here. So at this time, before we move on to the next topic of the issue and finding type of information and the different ways to present that, does anyone have, um, Toby, did anyone ask any questions about the audit plans? Let's see what kind of questions we had. So some of the questions that came through uh, were more about like knowing the kinds of information that we might be able to present and how do we balance that between um, understanding what the audit committee is expecting. Um, I would say that from just a general point of view, when we're talking about anything that the audit committee would be expecting, the kind of information that Stephen just went through, high level, just getting to the basics of what was done and why, whether that's going to be from an IT point of view or a compliance point of view or a financial or operational point of view, anytime whenever we can tell that story of um, here's what we're doing, here's what the audit department is accomplishing, um, here's what our plans are, that kind of information is what they're looking for. The topic itself is going to vary. It varies across departments. It varies across industries. It may even vary across quarters. You know? And so it's, it's having that open relationship with the audit committee to understand if what we presented this time met their expectations. And it just needs to be a very clear and honest conversation as to whether or not what we're presenting and providing is actually what they wanted to see. Thank you, Toby. So now let's talk about issue and finding information that we have. Now, this is also a, a resemblance of some common type of visuals that audit department will show an audit committee around issues or recommendation. It's a quick count. How many issues did we have year by year? So I can see that in 2013 we had 25 issues, and in 2014 we had 25, and in 2015 so far we've had four. So this is, once again, information. It answers the question, what, how many issues do we have? But pretty much that's as far as it goes. So one of the things that's important is to not only capture when an issue occurs, but how does it impact the organization, such as issue type. So for the issue types, these come from operational audits, information technology-based audits, financial, compliance, SOX-related. And however you need, what, it really depends on the type of industry your organization is in. Um, to know what type of information to capture. This is very generic information that really applies probably almost to every industry, but there may be more specific details that you may want to capture. If it's an insurance company or a federal government agency, you're going to capture maybe some additional information or different information. But I've added a little bit of context here through the categorization. I can see we have the 24 operational issues, we have 23 information technology, we have 13 financial, four stocks, and for compliance related. Now, when I look at this information, once again, it answers a couple more questions than just the number of issues. But what I want to do is take it even a step further. Let's answer as many questions as we can with one chart, one view. So just like we saw earlier um, with the audit plan. So here, right off the bat, I can visually see issues not only by count and by category, but by significance. Um, as we know, in audit, the number of issues you have in a particular area or category doesn't translate to significance or impact. 
But what this is showing is for those issues, how are they impacting our organization as a whole? So I can immediately see through this visual two towers that stand out, my information technology and my operational issues. So for my information technology, they're high and they're moderate. So they're, they're very, um, there's a lot of them. Um, and it's definitely something that the audit committee is going to ask questions about. Um, you know, why are there so many high IT issues? Why are there so many moderate total issues? For operational, it's the same thing. Now, for SOX, that's where you can use graphs to kind of also um, springboard a conversation about the issues you find. Because if you find a, a high or a significant SOX issue, that could have a tremendous impact on your organization. So if there's not many, but you don't, you don't want many um, financial related uh, issues. But if you do find them and they're significant or they're high, those are ones that you definitely want to comment on. And that's why you need to provide that detail. Um, Toby talked about earlier, we still need to provide detail. But when you're capturing information within, um, especially Excel, it's very easy to go through and drill down to those details. I want to see all my stocks. And because I have these details readily um, available, you can provide other summaries and other ways to look at this information that might be helpful. So let's take a look at some of the information that we're capturing. I can see the project name. So where do they originate? You might ask, you know, what, what um, audit did they come from? What region? Is it a global issue or is it something unique to the United States or wherever your um, organization is based, the main location? What's the issue title, the issue type? Were there a regulatory impact or were there repeat findings? Now this is huge, repeat findings. It, it, it's something that especially in the area of you know, SOX, if you have things that come up over, over and over, that, that, that's very significant. Or if there's, um, if there's a you know, IT-related issue that comes up over and over again, such as um, you know, access to a server. You know, if you have ac server access issues within your organization and it's a repeat, that's something that they may want to know and you may provide up front through a visual or you may have it readily available for them to look at. And then to look at the greater source, you can look at the group. We have the other details at the greater source, such as location, the rating, the um, actual issues. Those are things that you want to capture the actual issue dates. When did it occur? Um, so that way you can do your reporting based off that information. Toby, were there any questions related to issue reporting, the details you should capture, or presentation styles for audit committee there reporting? There were, there, there were a few questions I want to make sure that we address right now. Um, and I wish that we could address them all together as a group, but there's quite a few. So we're trying to get to some of these one-on-one uh, -on -one through email. But one of the questions was, where does the source data come from? And I, I think that's going to be critical to this entire conversation. So when we're looking at yeah. the source, source data that Stephen's bringing in, um, we kind of mentioned at the outset, there's lots of places this could come from. And you know, the question was, is this coming out of teammate or is this coming from somewhere else? It can come from anywhere. You know, we may be pulling some data out of a teammate audit because that's what we have access to. Um, but the reason why we're focusing on even doing this in Excel is the fact that you can capture this anywhere. So it's more about profiling what your audits look like and profiling what your findings look like. Because if we can start to, to break these things down to categorizations, that's going to be what drives all this, all this detailed graphics that we can get so that we can get down from that high level into that mid-level detail between those two especially and tell a story with it. But we have to start by capturing some of that data. Um, it could just be done in Excel. There's a lot of groups who just do a lot of work in Word, Excel, and SharePoint. So you can use Excel for this. If you've got a tool that, that aggregates the data, even better. It makes this a lot faster. Um, but where it's coming from is going to be from the execution of these audits. So just making sure that you're capturing it. Anything you want to add on that, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And and it's and it's funny because when we talk to audit departments, audit executives, um, and you know when we just do an assessment, how often, how long do you spend on gathering your information and preparing your audit report? You know, it's not a matter of hours; it's a matter of days and weeks. Um, and half the battle is organizing it in a way where you can then analyze it and present it. So whether you, like Toby said, you use uh, an audit management system like Teammate, 
whether you're entering that data in as you go into like a, an Excel or something like that, um, it's important to capture that information consistently and collectively in a centralized place. So the next area that we're going to look at includes resource reporting. So one of the things that is, is many times it's in the audit charter, um, it's part of the ICCF standard, is showing and having an adequate staff, um, which includes a competent staff, to carry out the audit plan. So how do you show that? How do you communicate that? What are some typical audit committee reports look like? So I'm going to go ahead and just open up a resource report here. So one of the things that you may show, which I see a lot, is just demographic information about your audit department. So in this slide that we're looking at now, um, or this presentation, is showing us the number of auditors. In this case, we have 15. We have 12 senior auditors. We have four audit managers. And we have one supervising senior auditor. So a lot of times, we just want to, we're, we're just thinking, let's show the audit committee who we are. Here's some information, some demographic information, which is helpful. Um, adding a little bit of context around your department is also helpful. And one of the things that I like to show is the certifications that our auditors have. And for this particular one, I can see that we have 17 auditors that have the CIA certification. We have eight that have the CISA certification, we have four that have a CPA, and then we have three that are actively working on a certification. And I would probably retitle that to actively seeking a post appointment <laughs> for the actual audit committee presentation. But this is helpful just to kind of let them know not only what roles do our auditors play, but also the credentials. They are staff to carry out the audit plan. Now, another nice progression that is helpful is to show um, in, in this particular one, I'm showing years of experience by credential. And this is going to set me up to share a story. So right now, just to take a, a review of what I'm looking at, I can see that we have um, for three years and under um, auditors, for those that have the three years or under that have been with our audit department, um, about half of them have the CIA. We have about 35-40% um, that have the CISA and then the remaining have the CPA. As we're looking at years three through five, about half have the CIA, and um, an increase in amount have the CISA, and about the same ratio have the CPA. For those five to 10 years, um, majority have a, a CIA, then we have the CISA CPA, 10 to 20 years is half CIA, then we have the CISA um, about 25% and CPA 25%. So this is helpful information to have, but what kind of story does it fit, does it paint, or how could I use it to describe my department? Maybe some objectives that we're trying to meet. So one of the things that we talked about earlier that's often challenging with audit uh, departments is just continuing to show your relevancy within your organization, that you are value added, you are all on the same team, and we are in tune with what's happening within our organization. We're just not siloed out um, on an island by ourselves. So I can actually use this presentation to communicate that. If our organization, you'll see that the CISA is increasing for those who are coming on board with our organization. Um, far outweighs the other certification. And the reason why is because our organization is changing. Maybe we are moving to more technologies where we have antiquated systems for our back office, so now we're going to start revamping everything. And we are showing through this presentation that our staff is ready. That we're ready not only for audit, but we're also ready for those advisory services, those control self-assessments, those process um, reviews while they're actually being implemented. So through this one presentation, I'm able to answer a lot of questions to the audit committee. And our source data, my favorite thing about a resource presentation, it doesn't take a lot of information to capture to get some really meaningful information communicated. So as I go through and look at my source data, I have very simple information. The name of the auditor, um, the title, what title do they have, is it co-source, are they part of our audit team, what location are they in, what um, type of roles, um, if you have, you know, some audit departments have huge audit departments where you have different teams with different managers and directors, um, what kind of skills do they possess? That's something else that's important to capture. 
especially for um, specialized industries such as uh, insurance, where you, you know you want someone that um, has very high analytical skills and different things of that nature. The experience, the credentials, and languages. I think languages can be helpful, especially if you have international operations. It's good to know what type of um, if you don't have local individuals in different countries of the world. You know, do you have individuals that are bilingual or trilingual that can assist in those audits? So this is a type of information, and through this information, you're just able to provide very meaningful information in context that uh, communicates information about your audit department and how you're meeting your objectives and staying relevant within your department and organization. Toby, were there any questions about resource-related reporting? Um, one of the questions came up. Um, this, was, this was actually sort of an overall one. Uh, and then there was a couple of specifically on the resource aspect of it. Um, and I want to address, I want to address the, the, the more overarching question here. Uh, one of the questions was, is this overkill if I have a small shop? And I thought that was a great question because what we're presenting right now, we're probably dealing with more of like a moderate to a larger audit department size to have this kind of information. Um, everything would be scaled. So think about the size of your operation. If there's just two of you running a department, then you know producing tons and tons of data in a report is going to be overly time consuming. If you're able to capture a lot of this data as part of your regular process, and I think that's that's really what we're getting towards with this. You know, when Stephen shows the the source material for all of our audits, where they, that he's pulling these charts from, he shows the source material for the issues. At the point when you're going through the audit, capture that data. At the moment when you find that, that issue and it becomes something you report, capture that data. If you're trying to do this after the fact, it, it's going to be a, a, a lot of time spent chasing the numbers to figure out what you did in the past. And you're opening yourself up for more human error. So the more that we capture this stuff real time when we find it, it'll make it much easier and it becomes an ongoing continuous process. Uh, but definitely this stuff gets scaled up and down. You know, what we just went through from a resource standpoint, for a small shop, this might be nothing. This might be super fast. You know what everybody has. You know what they can do. Quick, quick charts, a quick table, and you're done. Then getting into the issues, you might not have quite so many, and you might go a little bit deeper. Or if it's something where you do want to keep it higher level, it shouldn't be that much more to do. Um, but you have to scale this up and down knowing how often you have to report, how big your department is. Because if you don't have the resources to spend on this, then you really shouldn't be spending tons and tons of time. And there's going to be a negotiation with the, with the committee to find out what's adequate. Um, and, and Toby, I, you know, I'll piggyback off that. And, and it, I think it goes beyond just the size of the audit department, but the maturity level of the audit committee itself. Um, you know, you may have a high rotational audit committee. You may have individuals who, you know, aren't familiar with internal audits. Um, they're familiar with maybe external audits or um, the business itself, but not necessarily internal audits. So depending on the maturity level and, and the composition of your audit committee will also dictate the level of detail and how you present information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have a bunch of new audit committee members, then a high level of, hey, this is how many auditors we have, this is what they do, that, that's great for an initial presentation. But as that, as that committee matures, you're going to start feeding them more information to kind of educate them on how you provide value and what your true function is within your organization. The other question that came through was um, specifically around looking at resourcing, um, getting deeper into the certifications. So how would you present people that have dual certifications or multiple certifications? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a matter of how you capture that source data. Um, right now, I'm showing that, you know, kind of siloed. This is a number of certifications per um, experience band. So you're right, there might be some overlap where you have um, someone that has more than one certification in the five to 10 years, for example, they may have a CPA and CIA. So it just depends on how you capture the data. Um, you know, if there's different ways, things that you can do in Excel too, such as, you know, base your counts on the, um, or base your totals based off count versus sum versus percentage of total. So there's different things that you can do within these charts in Excel that also can manipulate what you've already captured 
but just a simple data point, how many certifications does someone have, here's a column, put number two, and then you're able to use that um, any way that you'd like in a future. And could you go back to the source tab, Stephen? I had a request if you could show it again. Yeah, absolutely. And this is all here for example. You know, anytime that we're talking through this information, uh, just keep in mind that this is meant to give you ideas. You know, when we start talking about categorizing, categorizing issues, we want to get you to start thinking about ways that might be meaningful. Um, same thing here, ways that this might be meaningful. Um, in fact, Stephen, just for sake of time, if we could jump back to the slides for a minute. You know, when we start talking about um, the kinds of information that we that we're getting into, uh, we're, we're talking about generating the stuff from different sources, capturing different kinds of information. So we get to our, our last polling question, which is, how does your department use any kind of systems to get to this information? Um, are you using some sort of an audit management system to capture it, or using some kind of a GRC or other large, more corporate-based system? Are you compiling the stuff manually? Make it up as you go, or you just don't know? And so about 91% have voted um, for this polling question, and 37% say that we use an audit management system, and about 54% say that we manually compile data. Um, and you know, it, a lot of time is spent compiling information. I, I would say if you're manually compiling data, probably 75% of your time is spent compiling the information, and 25% is actually spent Present, getting it in a present, uh, presentation ready format. Um, but for those who, and, and that, that's tough because if you're doing quarterly audit committee reports and you're spending the majority, you know, you're spending two or three weeks or four weeks preparing these things, you're spending the majority of your time actually gathering information opposed to analyzing and seeing these relationships. Um, but for those who use an automated system, that portion of it is done. So you can spend the majority of your time analyzing it and seeing these relationships. There's, it's amazing when you uh, visualize and analyze your data, what relationships you see that you just didn't know existed sometimes about how your actual work is tied to your objectives. They're tied to things that the audit committee wants to see. And, 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 it, and it's, it's really nice because once you have an understanding of what your data is, when you get the asked those um, ad hoc questions during the presentation, you can tell them, hey, you know what, that's a great question and, and there is some relationship there. Um, I can send you a follow-up email or we can show this at the next audit committee meeting. But because you have an understanding of what your data is and what you can show already, you're able to provide that very quickly. And if we could just jump to our last slide then. So we want to give you guys some resources of where to go if you have other questions. Um, attached to this presentation, uh, in addition to the slides, there's two handouts. One is a white paper that's uh, really about the, the top 10 things you can do to improve your effectiveness with the audit committee. And it goes through specific examples of what you can provide in specific types of data with feedback from people who have sat on audit committees for many years who can give you that real life hands-on point of view. Um, there's also a book put out by the IIA. It's a guide for internal auditing on audit committee reporting. It's a fantastic resource. Um, if you haven't read it, it's, it's a great place to start. Uh, there's also an article attached that summarizes a lot of the information that we went through today and even gives some more far-reaching ideas on ways that we might be able to improve relationships even with the audit committee and demystify that committee's presence within our department. And then also, if you look back to your professional associations, your local chapters of the IIA, um, there's wealth of resources out there. 
Toby, Toby and Steve. Great presentation. Uh, just uh, uh, one note on the uh, on the handout. Some people have indicated that the handouts didn't show up in their in their uh, in their panel, and it could be due to firewall restrictions. If anybody would like those handouts as well as the slides, they can just send an email to webinars at auditnet.org, and I'll make sure that you receive the uh, the handouts. Also, a reminder that everyone will be receiving uh, a uh, the link to a survey after the webinar is over. If you could please take a minute to fill out that, uh, that survey to help us improve future webinars. And also you will receive uh, that uh, link to the recording as well as the CPE if you answered all this, the polling questions. So with that, I'd like to thank, uh, thank Steve and Toby for a great presentation today and look forward to having you all come back for future presentations from Teammate and other AuditNet sponsors. Thank you very much.